Burger Boy is a music artist from Manchester, England. A carer, a sharer, a taker, a fighter. Uh, a liver of life, man. Trying to get it right like everyone else. I was drawn to music production by my love of music. From when I could remember, I used to record um, radio shows just to play them back and listen to. I used to do it, I don't even know how many hours I used to do it for. And it's weird because I was addicted to games, so for the fact that music took me away from games was something. I loved music when I was young and when I grew up now and like in my teens around 14 years old this is around 2004 someone put me onto the production software Fruity Loops and what's sick is um, we luckily had a computer because I know not a lot of people had a computer but we had a computer then um, I got that software I think I cracked it put it on and literally just started making my own beats and it was so fun I never understood the concept of making beats before. I never knew that's how music was made. But um, I started doing it and it was fun. And used to take the beats into school, rap over them myself. When I lived in Jamaica for a bit, I even went to Bob Marley's studio with a friend and we made a little trap. It was nothing special, but we just did it for the fun. It was just fun. Yeah, I got into Baseline when I was around 16, you know, like 2006. Just come back from Jamaica them times there, so I was really into my rap and hip hop. And then one of my friends, he was playing um, Baseline, he lived near me, so we used to chill. And when he was playing it, I was just thinking, what is this music? Because I wasn't into that, I was into rap and bass and, and R&B. So after a bit, and after going to a few house parties, I started to enjoy it because obviously I seen how people was dancing to it and I got into it myself. So that's how I got into Baseline. Started producing it, literally. First beats I made, first beats I made. Um, I used to send them like to my friends with Bluetooth and that kind of spread the music around Manchester like for some reason. Everyone wanted these tracks because I feel like it was a bit hard to get bass line at them times. So the little tracks that you could get, like literally, you, it was just precious gems to you. After producing bass line for a bit, I managed to get it to like some DJs who was just DJing in Manchester, like little bedroom DJs. But literally there was in clubs in town and one spot in Alibi and my tunes was getting blasted actually like no one knew it was mine no one knew who i was but it was getting played and people was dancing and at that time t2 was smashing it so the fact that my tunes was playing next to t2s and people was dancing to it it just gave me confidence to continue and now in 2007 after like doing it for around a year i got my tunes to like ej and jamie duggan and i I'll never forget jamie duggan he didn't like my tunes at first he said they, they sound like chipmunk tunes and he's like it won't work but obviously ej and um, supported me and then after that my tunes started spreading like uk wide now so it wasn't just manchester it was around the uk and that got me bookings really and truly i wasn't even a dj at first at first I was just trying to be a producer but so many promoters was asking me to DJ that I thought yo I'll just give it a go and I took my first booking in Leeds it was Mint Mint Club and it was sick man it was called North vs Mint literally that was the first time I ever played on DJ decks and then after that I, I got into DJing a bit and was just and um, practicing my DJs with, like, with DJ Calibre at college and shit, like, jeez, that was mental, mental times. In 2008 eight now, so we called it 2008 though, 
we didn't really say 2008 we said 200 so it was like 007 008 009 them times 008 now it was like the pinnacle of like burger boys like inauguration if you want to put it like that's when i was just about fully about in 2008 djing in leeds sheffield coventry leicester was popping bristol northampton and um, i'm trying to list every place cardiff <laughs> but yeah i was about man i was about from 2008 and obviously the work that i put in at that time obviously hold tight the driver nigel work that i put in them times there it just stuck and i'm still djing in 2019 from it There's so many ins inspiration that made me start making music. Like, I used to listen to the radio a lot and record, like literally record the radio, like I said. And um, I remember listening to Cameron, What Means the World to You, and just being blown away by the music, literally the music and the way that they put the song together. It was just like, and just such a new experience to me and I enjoyed it so much so I just think things like that like Ludacris What's Your Fantasy I remember hearing that and just thinking wow I was just amazed <laughs> amazed by it it just sounded so good and also when I was um, in Jamaica this was when I was 12 now I was in the school choir and that that kind of made me enjoy performing because one time that made me join the time that made me join the choir was I seen a guy perform with the choir and, and was killing it man and people loved it and I was just like yo that is sick so after that I joined the choir as well which I feel that fueled my passion for music even further so I, f I would say that's what inspired me to start The purpose for the purpose are, and the meaning behind my music is really work, party and faith. Obviously I feel like you need to work to obviously sustain yourself and to be able to party and then because obviously all work and no play is no it's not good for you. Like you have to play. And uh, we'll say faith because uh, sometimes things are out of your control. So all you can do is put in the work and have faith that the work that you put in will pay off. So my meaning behind my music is just work, party and faith. Yeah. What I love about the industry is the freedom that you have to express yourself, man. If you get yourself in the right environment, then you're expressing yourself so freely and it's just, it's, it's real liberating for yourself and, and you feel good do, doing it as well. And also what I love about the industry is like um, people who genuinely want to see you grow like and stay around, man. There's some people that um, I've made connections with like literally years later after going quiet, after being silent I come back to them and they're still there man and still trying to help me grow as well but what I hate about the industry is um, your chances of failure and, and the amount of pain that you go through to get where you're trying to go like this ain't for the faint hearted man this ain't for it depends on the level that you're trying to reach but if you really want success like in this music then you're gonna have to sacrifice a lot of things to get it and I hate that because obviously you don't really want to go through pain, you don't want to do it. And also what I hate about the industry is um, the culture vultures, like literally the people who will just hop on your bandwagon and just try and take all that they can from what you love. Like, so you got to be careful of the people that you work with because some people literally when they're in it just for the money then it, it can tarnish what you've created and tarnish what you're trying to build so obviously i'm gonna hate that because 
I'm one who's all for the culture and all for pushing the culture further. But obviously, despite all the culture vultures and all of the things I hate about the industry, you shouldn't be um, discouraged to continue. It doesn't discourage me. Like Regardless, I'm going to push through and regardless, I ain't going to let what I hate about the industry stop me from doing something I love. Yeah, man, my, my true obstacle when it comes to life and music is learning. Like, I can only speak for myself, but um, I, I don't give myself credit um, because I feel as though there's a lot more I could have learned a lot sooner. And I sound like one of them guys, you know, when, when, you, when you're a teenager and one of the guys is saying this, 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 and you're barely paying attention. But it's facts, man. I wish I learned quicker, like, I wish I learned quicker, like, especially because it's what I love doing, like, I wish I just dived a bit more into reading about it and dived a bit more into, um, like, learning about it, <laughs> for real, man, like, it's been a major obstacle, because, like, I'll compare it to, like, boxing, like, obviously, I knew my production skills was good, and let's say production skills is a job, so I'm just constantly working on my job. But there's many other parts of um, the industry, many other parts of this business and making it work. So that's just like the hooks and the right hand, the slips, the foot movement. If you're just working on the job, then it's not going to really help you win the fight because you need everything else in conjunction with the job to win the fight and that's just like the industry I need everything else in conjunction with the production skills to move further into the industry so that's just been my biggest obstacles and you get you get people who you know offer you a helping hand and really they drag you lower you get that in the industry and in life too and that's been a big obstacle man like trying to overcome the negative things that people bring into your space as well. I think my strength is my self-belief and the belief in where I could take this music, like no matter where I've been and no matter how low I've gone, my belief in myself has not wavered. And I think that's really helped me with my production as well because now I'm at a point where I believe in what I'm producing more so than I used to. I used to believe in where I could go um, when I was younger, but now I just believe in what I'm doing rather than the destination. I would say I'm at the destination, so that self-belief is what drives me to continue. I'd say that's my biggest strength. And also, fire music. <laughs> Oh, there's so many highlights to this. So many highlights, man. To name them all would be almost impossible, but highlights of this music career, man. I'll never forget 2008 Leeds. This was my B-Day bash, you know. And obviously, opposing gangs actually come to my party to, you know, party up. And then a squabble occurred. But because of my name and the party and my birthday bash, they decided to leave the squabble. And that's a major thing because at them times, like Manchester was hot as well, like gun crime was high. So for the simple fact that the music generated that kind of respect from them people, like that's a big highlight. I know, I know not everyone would say that, but literally like my community, has always been important to me. So that's why it's a highlight for me. In terms of like music, um, highlight of where my music has gone. Um, I would say being nominated for an Urban Music Award was a big highlight because I literally didn't do anything to get nominated. Obviously I'm putting in work, but I'm just having fun. 
so I'm not seeing it as work but obviously it's got noticed by the right people and I was nominated for an award that I was unaware of existed <laughs> and I was nominated for it obviously working with a lot of artists is a highlight he's been my favourite artist to work with and you know I like working alone but um, <laughs> the highlight like you could say Tiny Tempo made a tune with Tiny Tempo did a remix for Wretch did a remix for Scorcher they're highlights man Tebby Walker that's a highlight DJing in some of the best clubs like literally there's highlights like every time I go out <laughs> so to name like one specific highlight is kind of impossible because there's just so many highlights like literally look how many times I've said it as many times have I said it that's how many highlights there are so but yeah and I'm sure there's more to come to so I would say I've not even reached the point where you could really say is the pinnacle of my career I still think I'm building towards the big highlights you would say You know, my favorite venues to play are the ones where people are just engaged. The venue isn't the most important. As long as the system is, is you know, banging, then the venue's not too important. The people are more important. But the venues that I really love, um, I love Mint Leeds, and I love that place because it's the first place that I played in. But what's what's funny is I played there just the other day so literally imagine 10 years later 12 years later I'm coming back to the same venue and playing again it's kind of nostalgic I loved Rio Leeds that's I don't know if that is still open but that was like one of the best venues way back I used to love um, Club Demand in Coventry that was such a good venue it was such an open space and it's just perfect for skanking to be honest to tell the truth I love playing these days you know what I love Bristol I love Lakota in Bristol then people show me mega love there man I haven't been there for a hot minute so if you're listening Lakota I'm here and where else do I love it's just the people as long as the people are vibes you then they're the venues that I love. Um, the current artists that I'm really interested in at the moment are really on Instagram. I don't specifically follow like a, a person per se. Like I see Bass Boy making his movements, like Notion. I feel like he's got a groovy sound. Obviously, corrupts making his movements. There's a lot of people making the movements, but I'm really interested in um, listening to things that are not like my music because I'm not really trying to follow a sound. I'm really creating a sound, so I'm inspired by a lot of like trippy UKG and a lot of drum and bass, a lot of soul, a lot of hip hop. But literally the artists that I find are literally on Instagram that's where I'm going to listen to artists these days just listen to the 10 minute clip and just feel inspired <laughs> no 10 minute 10 second clip and then just feel inspired about what they what they're doing and their artistry and if I like it I'll comment on it too Yeah, my advice to producers is just keep leveling up. Like, never get complacent at the level that you're at. Always try and push past the level that you're at um, to get to a higher level, and um, you'll be okay, man. <laughs>